It is so windy and cold out here today. Yeah, I'm getting a little practice after my round. Woods were not good, but I'm working on my short game some. Hey everybody, welcome back to Golf Test Tell Me the channel where I use my game to help your game. I thought I'd put together a few clips of my short game practice at the end of one of the rounds I played here recently just to kind of show you the process that I go through and the things that I work on uh, when I am practicing my short game. Here I've chosen a spot just off of the green, maybe three paces. I've got a pitching wedge in hand and I'm going to the far pin out in the distance. The very first thing that I look at with any shot is the lie. In this case, I've got a good lie. It's pretty normal. As far as the spot goes, I want to choose a spot that's fairly level, it doesn't have a lot of pitch to it, and it's going to be close to the fringe, just past the fringe. I don't want to have to carry it too far. It's much easier to fly it to a spot that's really close to you than trying to fly it all the way across the green and carry it all the way to the hole in some sort of American style sexy shot. I just try to get it over the fringe on a predictable surface and let it roll out. Here's a clip from my recent round that I feel is very comparable to the shot that I was just practicing. This one actually looks like it's about 50-50, but it's just the angle. Really, I'm landing this ball fairly quickly onto the green, as you can see, and letting it roll out most of the way to the hole. This, for me, is what I consider a chip. The technique I use is really simple. I just play the ball back at my stance a little bit, and I make sure that I get my weight ahead of the ball. And from there, I just allow the club to fall down onto the back of the ball first and then contact the turf. It's really important that I feel that crisp click as the ball hits the club face first and then I feel the turf interact with the club face and the leading edge after that. I'm going to show you a different angle here. I know this is probably not the best angle to look at my setup, but I wanted you to see what it looks like from the other side. Now I'm chipping from a different area here, and this one's almost a pitch, as this is more of a 50-50 shot, 50% 50 carry to 50% roll. Even though it's the same distance from where I'm pitching from to the hole, I've got a little bit more slope coming back toward me, and I've also got to carry the ball a little bit further. So I have to pick a little bit more aggressive shot and get something that's a little more lofted so that it'll sit down a little bit quicker and carry further. Same spot here, just from the opposite side. I just moved the camera back behind me. Again, we're doing 50% fly to 50% roll, more lofted club. I'm going at different targets from the same spot here. I'm gonna add in some graphics here and slow things down a little bit to kind of show you some different things that are happening here. This arrow represents the natural curve that the club head is going to swing along coming down into the ball. However, that's not really the feel or the intent that I have. Here with this arrow, I show you my intent. I almost feel like I'm making a beeline from where I have the club taken back to, to impact. I want that straight line, that downward crisp contact coming into the ball. Again, let's take you to an on-course scenario that kind of matches up with what I'm practicing. Here I've got a little bit of a raised area that I have to fly past or else the ball will just stop right there on the fringe. But the pin is cut fairly close to the front of the green, so this needs to be mostly fly. However, that is such a high risk shot for me and for others like me, many of you, that you have to get it so high up in the air and put all the spin and check on it. It's just a, a really risky shot. So here I'm trying to almost fly it to the hole and just let it roll out past it to give myself a putt. However, the result here is that I actually come up a little bit short of my spot and I'm about two to three feet short of having a great shot that would do exactly what I wanted it to do. Number one rule, get the ball on the green first. Left it a little short. I tried to get cute with it and get it close, but I got a, I don't know, about a seven or eight foot putt here for par. Uh, shouldn't be too bad. Let's see how it goes. I left myself a low percentage putt there. I was in a bad spot and I was putting from the fringe. It was grass missing, it was lumpy. It's just a low percentage putt, which is exactly why I practice these shots like I do. It's because I wanna be able to at least get it on the green 
somewhere so that I've got a putt at it, a, a decent putt at it. I've got a higher percentage putt. I like to play around with different trajectories and different clubs from the same spot in the same situations just to see how the ball reacts. I'm trying to learn. I'm trying to get as much information as I can so I can get creative and really engage my imagination when I get out onto the course. The vast majority of my short game practice revolves around the most likely scenarios. Now what do I mean by that? What I mean by that is this. You know where you're likely to miss a shot, or a lot of times your strategy is, where am I going to miss this shot? Where do I want to miss this shot if I do miss? What kind of shot am I going to be left with? You're trying to leave yourself shots that you feel are in your wheelhouse, your high percentage shots. So I don't put a lot of practice into just really unlikely tough shots. Take a look at this for example. Now I see this all the time. People practicing where they're just a foot or two foot onto the collar. That's just kind of ridiculous. You know, he was wide open here. Now, if you had a clump of grass in front of your ball, you had a bad lie, or maybe you had a clump of grass behind your ball, I could see pulling out some sort of a wedge or something like that to chip. But me personally, if I'm just onto the fringe and I've got a pretty wide open shot, I don't have a, a bad lie or anything like that, I'm pulling out the putter and I'm just going to give it a little bit of a pop to get it up and get it started. Now this shot I'm showing you here is because I have a left to right tilt with a back to front slope on this green and I've got collar off to the right as well as collar that I have to fly in front of me. The safe landing spot is indicated by the blue here. I want to stay away from the let from the short collar and from the right collar. If I play it too short or too far to the right, I could really end up in trouble and end up letting this ball run off to the right side of the green or just staying way back short. To me, the safer play is out to the left and just let the natural slope of the green carry it off to the right. I may end up with a little bit longer putt or a less than ideal putt, but at least I'll be on the green and I'll have a putt at it rather than watching my ball trickle way off to the right and go back off of the green that I just got on to. Now speaking on trying to play your shots to a safe area and pick a safe landing spot that's going to at least give you a putt at it, check this one out. If I end up short in this red or to the left or long in the red, I'm off the green. I have no putt. The safer play is to play to the yellow circle out here to the right of the flag and short of the flag. Make sure you get it up onto the green. I do that here, but I leave it about three feet short, and then that in turn leaves me about an eight foot putt rather than a two foot putt coming into that green. Basically, the way I practice and play on course with my short game is that I try to avoid high tax shots. Not too high, not too risky, not too close to trouble. The main thing is to try and get up and down, give yourself a putt at it, and save your par, and at the worst, you get a bogey. Hope this helps. See you next time.